the River Spey, probably the most iconic river in the world. Famous for its beauty, its mystique and its wonderful run of Atlantic salmon. Tolkien's Crag and Moor on the River Spey is a classic holding pool for salmon from late spring and throughout the summer months. Beginning high up in the neck is a fast, tight stream. It breaks out into a long, wide glide past the hut, before picking up again with pace as it exits the gravel bar at its tail. I'm not sure there are many pools of such quality in any river, nor many that have so consistently produced salmon to the fly over the years. The Crag and Moor plays a central role on Tolkien's water. It's a fascinating pool to fish the fly. Conditions today are near perfect, and there will be a chance of a fish anywhere in the pool. The pool is an easy wade throughout its length, but can be challenging covering the glide, requiring a long cast to cover the lies on the far bank. Having landed and lost a salmon earlier upstream at the churchyard pool, I'm looking forward to fishing the Kragan Moor. I've had a lot of success over the years here and I'm hopeful of a fish today. My expectations have heightened after learning the pool produced a 15 pound bar of silver mid-morning. So I know there will be fish here. While I'm not denying the merits of sinking lines and large heavy flies, there is something satisfying about setting up a full floating line with a long leader and a small dressed fly. The Crag and Moor lies midway on Tolkien's D beat, where the beat's hut sits at a commanding vantage point to view the entire length of the pool. Today I've set up a 14 foot rod with a 9 weight line and a size 12 park shrimp. I like the colours of this fly in these low water conditions on the spay, where the water still retains quite a dark peaty colour. I'm going to start right up in the neck of the pool, just below the croy with a short line. As I walk down the pool into the glide, I will increase the angle of the cast to give the fly some speed and walk the fly through the glide with more pace to attract a salmon. I start the pool casting at a tight angle because I want the fly to drift slowly into the fast water from the slack on the opposite bank. I always find fish like to line this interface before they start the next stage of their journey upstream. For 
now I'm focused on the neck of the pool and getting my fly into the glassy water just off the rocks on the opposite bank. A classic lie for resting salmon. I'm sure anyone who fishes to fly for salmon will agree. There's nothing more exciting than the initial pull in the line when a salmon takes the fly. It can be a soft, delicate take as the salmon almost sips the fly, or a devastating explosion of power depending on the mood of your fish, or of course more likely on how you've presented your fly. I don't think it matters how many salmon an angler has caught, or how long the fight might last. It comes down to that fraction of a second when you first feel your quarry. This fish was lying in the fast water off the rocks and neck of the pool when it took the fly very gently. Even such a gentle take is unmistakable, and I felt it turn quickly return to its lie when I tightened into it. I managed to bring it through the fast water quite quickly, but it immediately turns to push its way back over towards its lie. I'm not going to force it to stay close. It's not nearly ready to come in, and I've got more chance of tiding it out if it has to fight the water as well as me. I bring it closer a second time, but it turns again, still with a lot of power and forces its way back over. Again I bring it in, and this time I get a good look at it. It's a fresh fish, I'm guessing just into double figures. For a second it seems done, and I lift the rod and think about backing up to bring the fish in. But it senses my presence and makes another long run. This is not a fish that's going to give up easily. I decide to tighten into the fish and hold it from running again. It must be tiring. I don't think it'll be able to fight against a harder drag. I've no net, so I'm going to have to beach this one onto the shingle. I keep the rod high, continually shorten the line as the fish approaches the bank. This is the hard bit. You need to keep the line tight all the time as you close in on the fish. More often than not, this is the time the fish will be lost. I need to be very careful and concentrate not to let the line go slack when reaching for the fish. That was quite a battle, but it's over and the fish has landed. It's probably the most stressful part of salmon fishing when the fish is so close yet still so far. I'll take a quick photo and get it back in the water as quickly as I can. It's best to minimise the time the fish is out of the water. I'm estimating this fish is around the £10 mark and I'd say it's been in the river a few weeks already, but it's still quite silver. It's a cockfish, and I can feel he is still very strong, which is a good sign. I don't think he'll be hanging around very long once he's ready to go. It's a great feeling releasing a salmon. These fish are just magnificent, and it's very special encountering one in this beautiful setting on the River Spey. I look forward to fishing this river immensely and the pools of Tulkin in particular. I love being on Speyside at this time of the year. Early summer is a perfect time to fish on the Spey and with the right conditions an angler can be very confident of landing the fish. The river is in fabulous condition today, although some anglers I'm sure would like it a little higher, particularly here in the Kragan Moor. 
I've seen fish moving in all the pools I've fished today, which is a good sign of the number of fish in the system this year. And we need to take the positives from that. I'm immensely happy to have landed two salmon for my day, and I head contentedly back to the hut to meet with my fellow anglers. I'm hoping everyone on the beat today has had success and we can share our stories of triumph. I'm confident the river will continue its recovery and deliver another strong run of fish next year. I'll definitely be here and hopefully be able to tempt some more of these very special fish to my fly.